Well now, that didn't go well. I said it was boom or bust, and boy was I correct. I busted. 240.2 fantasy points. It's 110 less than yesterday, <laughs> which is... It's like having three more roster spots. Um, this is going to be fun because uh, this is just real bad. Really, really, really bad. Let's get into it. I don't have anything else to say. Uh, lineup was Kyle Lowry, Goran Dragic, Alec Burks, Evan Fournier, Boyan Bogdanovich, Kelly Oubre, Anthony Davis, Draymond Green, Dwight Howard. I can't even blame this on minutes. I had them projected for 275. They hit 264. It wasn't changing anything. Came in 33 points under my projections. 60, well, 40-something points under Locke. Which, you know, was, it was a real weird night. Locke in a, in a double up was like 281 or something. Which is just a really weird night of fantasy basketball. And they happen. Um, I'm generally okay with it when they shake out like this. When I miss low, you know, like a 240 night, and the cut line comes in low, I generally just sh shrug my shoulders, chalk it up to the the weirdness of, D of DFS. But let's get into the point guards now. And um, start at the top. Russ. Uh, in the morning, I liked him. I thought I was going to end up on him, but I ended up uh, really being into Kyle Lowry last night. Um Russ came in under value, 4.1x, did 45.8 in 36 minutes. Um, I'm not really upset that I didn't have Russ, but <laughs> we're getting to a better situation. Curry looked good, uh, 50 fantasy points in 33 minutes. That's a that's going to be a big one for him. I expect his salary to hop back up over uh, 10k now. Um, he did hit value, and then we get to the third most expensive point guard on the list last night, Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry, in a game where Toronto scored 120, and Indiana was in the game the entire time. They, Toronto won by five. Kyle Lowry had 28 fantasy points. 28. I, I don't... Like, he took 11 shots to DeRozan's 21. You know, he made he was 3 of 9 from 3. That's, you know, I'm basically happy with that. Eight assists, seven rebounds. Like, he just he didn't shoot the ball enough. Um, you know, he's negative five while he was on the floor. It's the Toronto bench that kept them kept them chugging along. Like, if Fred Lamvit's going to take nine shots and Jakob Pertl's going to go eight for eight from the field, you know, uh, Siakam with seven shots, CJ Miles with seven shots, like, everybody was shooting. The only person that decided, you know what, I'm going to shoot a lot was DeRozan. I need Lowry to be a little bit more um, stingy with his generosity. Didn't work. Um, is that recording? Yeah, it is. You never know. Production value. Then you got uh, Alfred Payton, Chris Dunn, Jeff Teague. Um, all came in just slightly under value. I was never looking at any of those three guys. I'm okay with that. Who I did end up with, though, Goran Dragic. And I think he's just mad because I don't know how to say his last name. And for some reason, it gets all jumbled up on my tongue when it comes out. But at one point, um, it was either late in the second quarter or early in the third quarter. At this point, I'm trying to forget. He had negative one. I think it was late in the second quarter. He had negative one fantasy points, which is fucking terrible. <laughs> I don't know. There's no other way to say it. Um, that could not have gone more wrong. And he, again, like, you know, Miami put up 105. The game was close. I, I, I still think it was, like, a good matchup for him. I mean, obviously I'm wrong. But 3 of 12 from the field. He had 5 turnovers. It was a minus 7. Again, the bench of the Heat, James Johnson, Kelly Olynyk, Kelly Olynyk got 30 minutes. Ugh. Tyler Johnson, 
My boy Wayne, 14 points, 4 boards, an assist, and 2 steal. What is just smashed value. Um, it's one of those games. Like, I don't... There's nothing... There's no way to predict that the bench is going to... Like, the James Johnson, Kelly Olenek, Tyler Johnson group is going to be plus 17, 18, and 10, respectively. It's just weirdness. I could have been... I could have been on, you know, Michael Carter-Williams, and that would have sucked, too. I don't, this game was just a weird game, and I shouldn't have had multiple parts of it. So he came in 14 points, 2.3x. Uh, it could have been worse. I could have ended up on Chalmers or Reggie Jackson or trying to roster Tyus Jones thinking Teague would be out. All these guys just bombed, 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 bombed. Um, all these little green dots are basically on dudes that I didn't even look at. Like, I wasn't looking at Darren Collison, 6x. Uh, I wasn't look. wait, Michael Carter-Williams put up 29? Didn't, didn't I just look at a shitty line? 12, 6, was this 20? Yeah, okay. Wrong again. I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> Rondo, 7x. De'Aaron Fox, 5.7, George Hill, 5.2, Sadoransky, 6.7, Jerry and Grant, 7.2, Tim Fraser, 6.5, Van Vliet, 7.5. Like, absolutely none of these guys were on my radar. None. I looked at Russ. I looked at Kyle Lowry. I looked at my boy Goran. Um, I liked Rubio. He put up 3.2x. That was basically it at point guard. And uh, it was just wrong. Like, very, very, very wrong. They got, what is that, 42.7 between the two of them? I needed that from just Lowry. It's a get-awful point guard. So, obviously, uh, point guard, not off to the best start. Shooting guard, on the other hand, that actually went well. So, I determined that whether or not Rodney Hood was in or out, I was comfortable going with Alec Burks at 3,600. I still expected him to play, you know, 18 plus minutes, and it, I didn't think that it, he was going to be in a situation to just fully sink me if I did that. Turns out I, I didn't need any help getting sunk. Um, but the the likelihood was that Hood wasn't going to play, and I th that upside at 3,600 was just ginormous because he w he's not a complete zero if he's still just in the rotation. And once again, he Rodney Hood didn't play, and uh, Alec Burks dropped 38 in 31 minutes, 10.6x. Doesn't get me anywhere. It's not useful because the rest of the team was a hot garbage water, but we'll go back up to the top. Oladipo, again, I don't, this dude, 8,600, his price is going to go up, 68 fantasy points in 38 minutes, he hit 8x, he's just playing out of his mind, and it's three steals, three blocks, like right there, that's 18 fantasy points, I mean, granted he scored 36, <coughs> had 7 and 6, I had a tweet about it yesterday, but how much would the Magic love to have this Victor Oladipo back? Like, he would fit in perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. You just, like, you would kind of just need to not have Alfred Payton, I guess. But, man, if they had a little core of Oladipo and Gordon right now, whew, be fun. Be fun. Bradley Beal, uh, once again, laid an egg. 17 fantasy points in 32 minutes. I just would assume that his price is going to come tumbling down, which is great because uh, when it does, I'm going to slam Bradley Beal. Um, that'll be fun. I hope it drops to like 7,000. I hope we'll be fired up like crazy. Uh, then, you know, DeRozan is the, the piece of the Toronto lineup that went nuts. I didn't see that coming. Clay looked good. I came close to getting on Clay. Uh, ultimately, didn't do it. I think that was one of my bigger mistakes: is not having a, a bigger piece of the Golden State Magic game. I should have focused on that out of the gate. Focus was a little skewed. Got to remember to pay attention to points. 
Tyreek played a pretty big egg, 14 fantasy points. Donovan Mitchell went ham, 48.8 in 36 minutes. That's a 7x. Um, I never really looked at Drew. I didn't like the thought of Jeremy Lamb last night. Um, if he's not, like, he's a little too expensive right now for coming off the bench. He needs to be, like, a little, probably, like, 5,800, somewhere in that area. Wiggins got to value. Waiters didn't. Um, I was okay with Justin Holiday last night. He got to 4.8, so that would have been helpful. Um, but ultimately, I ended up on Evan Fournier. And shooting guard turned into the only place that I made good decisions. 31 fantasy points in 33 minutes. He hit 5.9x. Um, right off the bat, like the first four or five minutes of the game, <clears throat> I had Draymond playing and Fournier playing, and they both put up like seven quick fantasy points, and I was like, okay, tonight's going to be the night. It's the boom night, not the bus night. And then nothing got better. It just got worse over and over and over again. Um Obviously, Burks was the value play you were looking for, but, you know, Garrett Temple looked good, 6.8x. I was sneakily on Norman Powell. He only played 15 minutes, but he got uh, 22 fantasy points, so he still hit value. Uh, in hindsight, I wish I would have got him in there. And then you get into guys that are tricky to own outside of GPPs. Bogdan, Etom Moore, uh, Ben McLemore, McCaw, Manu. Wayne Ellington, 26.3 fantasy points in 17 minutes. Stroke in that three ball. This is the Wayne Ellington show, ladies and gents. Small forward. I went Boyan and Kelly Oubre. Oubre had been playing really well with John Wall out, and uh, I needed to fit somebody in in salary in that range. I did not really look too much at Durant. Came in just under value. Um, he was really heavily owned, so that's probably a miss on my part. But again, I think that I sort of just missed on that game, and I'm not entirely sure why. I know to focus on that. So, you know, learning experience gives you a, another reminder in the back of your head when you're making a lineup. Um, Paul George, on the other hand, whew, 61.3 fantasy points, 42 minutes. Um, I didn't see the matchup shaking out like that, but it did, and he just torched. Um, same for Butler, really. I mean, he didn't go crazy. 48 points in 41 minutes, 5.9x, but you won it. Um, it's a great night out of Butler. I had Otto Porter, like, all morning, and then as I was building here, I just couldn't fit him in, and that sucked because I should have. 41 fantasy points in 32 minutes. He hit 5.9x. Glad I got off of Denzel Valentine because he laid an egg, as did Kyle Anderson. Joe Ingles with a big night. Lance with a egg. But I got on Ubre, 18 fantasy points in 23 minutes. Uh, that's more of a normal Kelly Ubre game. You know, what are you going to do? Uh, those aren't the sort of spots where I'm upset when guys come in under value a little bit. Like, he's Kelly Ubre. He's not supposed to be. I shouldn't expect him to put up 40. Um, nobody really went super crazy outside of Josh Richardson, another guy that I was halfway on for a while, 34 points in 34 minutes. I got talked out of him in the chat. Thanks, guys. Uh, 7.8x. I'm kidding. I, I deserve everything that happened to me tonight. Boyan, 15 points in 35 minutes. I think he had most of those in the first half and then laid an egg, 3.3x. David Nwaba ended up getting 22 minutes and putting up 6.6x. I'm pretty sure he flipped me off on the way off the court. Wouldn't blame him. And then you're getting into guys that would have been tricky again. You know, you're Darius Miller, Justice Winslow's, Caspi, CJ Miles, Paul Zipser hit 6.7x. But really, you needed to miss the landmines of Denzel Valentine, Kyle Anderson. <laughs> it's just bad. Like, and... My owner, like the ownership on these guys, was all balanced. No, but nothing crazy. Like Lowry, twenty three, Dragic, thirty two, Burks, forty, Fournier, thirty six. So the two that I did that went the best or the highest, go figure. Uh, Boyan and Kelly both in the twenties. You know, AD was twenty five, Draymond eleven, Dwight fifteen. Like those are all 
super reasonable ownerships. It was just a weird slate. I don't think that anybody really had a good feel, hence the low scoring. Um, AD, 39 in 31 minutes, got hurt, doubtful for today. I think it's today. Today or tomorrow, whatever. doesn't matter. He's doubtful. Um, doesn't affect the performance. You know, he wasn't going to hit value regardless. I just never get that dude right. Aldridge came back down to earth, 29.7 fantasy points in 31 minutes. I liked Draymond. I, I knew that I needed a piece of that Warriors and Magic game on the Warriors side, and Draymond seemed to fit the best for me. He hit 40 fantasy points in 33 minutes, just under 5x. I'm, I, I'll take that all day. Um, Aaron Gordon continued to go crazy, though. 44.9 in 36 minutes, 5.7x. He just... He's the dude. He's the dude for the magic. I hope if you were on Mellow, you got sunk. Um, if you were on Tobias Harris, you got sunk. Sabonis now playing 20 minutes, 2.8x. Blick. For a while, I liked Thad. He got 4.6x. It's just a typical Thad game. But clearly, everyone saw coming the 47.31 minute outburst from Zach Randolph. 8.9x. This dude just won't go away. He goes from playing 20 minutes in like back to back games to 31 and just going crazy. I can't make out the Kings, man. I don't. I can't figure it out. I liked Ibaka more than Siakam last night, and that rang true. Neither of them ended up in a lineup. Um, Markeith finally decided to eat fantasy wise. 9.1x, 41 fantasy points, for almost 42. So, good for him. It's good to see him coming out. I'd like to see another, like, functional power forward guy in the lower tier. But, yeah, ultimately I had uh, Draymond, which went well. And AD, which did not. It's the story of uh, DFS. And we get into a, a real fun one. Uh, I never really paid too much attention to Boogie last night. Um, he did pretty much exactly what I expected from a fantasy night from him. So, 4.4x. I had some thoughts on Towns, but I didn't think that I would ever get there. 4.6x. You know, I'd have been happy with either of those two things. Drummond went ham. 57 fantasy points in 36 minutes. Uh, I wish I would have been on him that night compared to the blowout night a couple nights ago, but whatever. Instead, I went with Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard had a matchup against Bam Adebayo, which is, like, in a way, like, if Dwight went to go play in the G League for another night, I thought that he was just going to absolutely hammer the heat. And he was lower owned, which, that's the part that got me the most. I, I don't know how I missed here. Because he's been playing well, and it's a... It, in my opinion, a great matchup. It was just Bam and Kelly Olynyk, But here we are. Dwight Howard, 17 minutes. And you look at it, and it's like, oh, he almost had a triple-double in 17 minutes. He had 10 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 turnovers. Nine. How the hell does Dwight Howard get 9 turnovers in 17 minutes? With 5 personal fouls. He was plus 3. It, like, if he stays out of foul trouble, he he probably hits value. He's playing well. Everybody else was playing like shit. But instead he got in foul trouble and then nine turnovers. <laughs> I, I don't... He even made both his free throws. <laughs> he had a block. Like, I just didn't see the 17 minutes coming, obviously. Put up uh, 1.9x and I was dead in the water because of him. Luckily, <coughs> if I was going to do anything else last night, it was probably going to be Vooch. And he was just as bad. So I can't be too upset. Um, Gortat was the guy that was popping in my optimals. Um, and I didn't really love him, so I, I didn't pay too much attention to him. Normally the nights that I like him, that he has like normal Gortat nights where he scores like 12 and 8. And you don't give a shit. 41.9 last night. 9.1x. 
The uh, Hornet center that you wanted was Cody Zeller, 31 minutes, 29 fantasy points, 8x. Or, you know, if you were like, I think that uh, Jakob Pertl is going to have a big fantasy night, 34 points in 25 minutes, 9.8x. Um, basically, everything that you did at center last night was fine, so long as you didn't end up on Dwight Howard or Vooch. And I obviously ended up with Dwight Howard. So yeah, that's a bloodbath. Um, shout out to the two people I beat in head-to-head. Because um, you're probably the only two people who feel worse than I do tonight. Well, this morning. Um, it happens. You know, we'll be back on the grind again today. Uh, re- or breakdown video is coming. Um up in the air whether or not there's going to be a live before lock tonight just don't know you know what i've got going on for saturday i'd like to um and i'll be posting on twitter or well twitter and the uh reddit dfs to let you guys know if the live before lock is going to happen um i hope it does it's fun what a fun group last night hit 215 or something live people so it's kind of fun um If you like this video and you like my misery, please click that thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not a subscriber yet. Uh, I will break the slate down every morning. Um, Sometimes they're more fun than this, but I am dejected and sad. Um, Follow me on Twitter. Twitter handle's up there. It's my name. If you're interested, I have set up a Patreon as of yesterday. And... I have a thank you to give out, which I didn't prepare for, because I forgot. So, to my first patron, where are we at here, Thomas Poole. Giving you the big wave. Giving you the double shout out. Thomas Poole is the first patron of the Josh Engelman YouTube channel projections uh, quagmire. I don't know. I don't know what I am. The, my compound. Uh, thank you so much. That's I, It's really cool. It's really weird to me, but it's also really cool. So I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, you guys should all like follow his suit. It'd be way more, way more fun for everybody if everybody just tried to be more like, uh, more like him. But that's all I got. Uh, projections will be out shortly, um, probably long before you listen to this. And um, good luck tonight. We need to have a better night than two forty point two. Bye bye.